let's get into our last session on manipulating objects then. What we're going to start off with is a discussion of prefixes. For those of you who have been playing along at home since we started this, you may remember that I talked about prefixes very briefly in one of the earlier slides when we were discussing the nature of buckets. A prefix can be thought of as a directory or a file path. So your bucket, just as a quick review, is like your drive and your object is like your file. And so unless you want all of your files to sit in the same root of your drive, you need to have directories. And that's what a prefix does for you. It allows you to take a bucket and segment it into different file or directory paths. The prefix becomes part of the path to access an object, which means that anywhere where you have an object name, you can actually use a prefix as well. The prefix itself is part of a bucket. And importantly, a prefix only exists in MinIO if there are objects that use the prefix. So this means if I want to create a prefix, I simply need to put an object under that prefix. Similarly, if I have objects in a prefix and I remove all of those objects, then the prefix will be deleted as well. So I can't just delete a prefix and hope that all the objects go away. No, I actually have to delete the objects from the prefix. Importantly, an object only exists in one prefix. This is very important. It does not have a way to link an object from one prefix to another. Because you can only have a prefix if an object exists under it, the only way to have an object exist in more than one prefix is to actually copy the object. In which case, they're technically two separate objects. They'll have separate metadata, they'll have separate e-tags, they'll have separate version IDs and all that other stuff. There will be no link between them. So an object only exists in one prefix. When we're using prefixes, it's really done as a simple way to separate data within a bucket. Now again, one of the things that I have mentioned, developers are not going to create new buckets for all of their different tasks. They will have a bucket associated with a particular application. And this bucket will likely be stood up for them by the object storage administrator. The reason for this is we don't necessarily need an application to create buckets unless our application is implementing some sort of storage as a service. So what the developer is going to do is create prefixes within the bucket to separate out their data rather than creating new buckets. How do you set prefixes? It's very simple. Any code where an object name is set may include a prefix. There are a couple of methods that we may run across where the prefix itself is a separate item in the list of arguments. But generally speaking, all you need to do is put a prefix on the object name and it will be used. So here's a simple example. That fput object that we did in the last lesson. It takes a bucket name, a destination object, and a source file. All we need to do to use prefixes for this is to simply put the prefix and a slash before the name of the destination object. If I'm retrieving a stream that takes a bucket name and an object name, I simply put the prefix in front of the object name and I'm good to go. Please note, if the prefix does not exist, it will be created during the process of creating the object. So that makes prefixes very easy to use. 